With the warmer weather approaching, I've been thinking about summer desserts. So today, I'm going to make one of my favourites, a pavlova. So before you start making your meringue, it's a good idea to get your tin ready. So once you've lined it with some paper, you want to find something in the kitchen that's about eight inches wide. So I've got a plate here that works really well. You draw around your plate, and then once you're done, turn your paper over so it's pencil side down. So you need to separate your eggs, making sure that your white is going into a really, really clean mixing bowl. You don't want any grease in there. So once you've got this to soft peaks, you can start adding your sugar. So you know when you can stop whisking, when your meringue has got to a nice stiff peaks. Okay, so my meringue's ready, so now I've got to add the corn flour, white wine vinegar and vanilla extract. These I've measured out. So sprinkle in your corn flour and put white wine vinegar in and then you want to measure out your vanilla extract. So this vanilla is obviously just for flavour but your corn flour and your white wine vinegar are to sort of give the pavlova a chewy texture. And then you can give them a fold through. And once they're mixed in, you want to add your last ingredient, which is your chopped pistachios. And you can literally just add them straight in and then again give it another mix through. So my meringue mix is ready, but before I add it to the tray, I'm going to take a little bit and just dollop it in the corners and this means that you can help keep your paper still. So paper stuck down, you need to add your meringue to your tray and you want to just make sure you're pouring it in between the lines of the circle. So when you're spreading out the meringue you want to make quite a big well in the centre with the sides higher and the trick to this is then when it rises in the oven you don't get a big collapse in the middle. So my meringue is ready to go in the oven and I've preheated it to 180 degrees. So I'm gonna pop it in and then I'm immediately gonna turn it down to 120 and leave it there for an hour. And then after that hour, I'm gonna turn the oven off and just leave the pavlova in there to cool. So, and also don't be tempted to open the door and have a look how it's doing. Just leave it shut the whole time until it's cool. Otherwise that rush of cold air can mean that the pavlova will collapse or might have a big crack in it. So it's been a few hours now since the oven's been turned off. And it's nice and cool. And if you take your pavlova and have a look underneath, you'll see that when you tap it, it's hollow. And that means the outside's cooked. And also then you'll have that nice chewy inside as well. So with my pavlova done, I need to think about dressing it. And I'm going to start by doing the roasted rhubarb. OK, so to prepare your rhubarb, you take off your ends first. And I've already given this a wash. And then you're going to cut each of the lengths into about seven centimetres. And if you've got any that are thicker, like I have here, some are a bit wider than others, you want to probably cut them lengthwise as well so that it all ends up cooking at the same rate. So all my rhubarb is chopped and ready. You just want to add it to your baking tray. And then with that, to sweeten the rhubarb, because it's quite tart otherwise, you want to add, first of all, some water to the tray. Just quite a, a sort of liberal sprinkling, really. And then, again, with sugar. And then you can just mix it all up with your hands. So you just make sure, basically, that all the rhubarb's covered in sugar and water. And then once you've done that, just lay them out so they're on a single layer on the tray and then they'll cook properly. Okay, so sugar and water done, it's all been laid out. I'm gonna add it to the oven now, which is at 180 degrees for about 10 minutes. Okay, so with the rhubarb roasting in the oven, I'm ready to do the passion fruit cream. So you're gonna add your sugar, first of all, to the cream. And then with the, an electric whisk, or if you're brave enough, you can do it by hand, you can start whisking your cream. And once it's nearly done and you've got sort of soft peaks, you can chop your passion fruit in half and just carefully scrape out the seeds and then fold them through the cream. Okay, so I've got my cooled rhubarb all ready to go. I've got my strawberries chopped. I've got the rest of the pistachios, which didn't go into the meringue. I've got my passion fruit cream, which I just got out of the fridge. So with all the ingredients ready, we can assemble the pavlova. Okay, so you want to start by adding your passion fruit cream. You can just sort of dollop it into the centre and then spread it out to the sides. Just push your cream sort of out to the side, so it's about an inch from the edge. You don't want to push it too far, so it's spilling over. And then you're ready to add your other ingredients. So you start putting on some rhubarb, add a few strawberries as well. And again, just sort of drop them about. I've saved a passion fruit 
from earlier. If you spoon that over as well, it looks really nice when it's sort of drizzling over the top of the meringue and the fruit. And then with the pistachios you had left over, you can sprinkle them over the top. And there you have it. So you've got a single tier here, but obviously if you want to make a bigger one, if you're having a barbecue in the summer or someone's party, then you can triple the recipe and you'll end up with a nice big three-tiered one. So I've gone all out and made a three-tier pavlova so you could see what it can look like. And I've added some rose petals, which are edible. So they're a great finishing touch. And there you have it, a summer fruit pavlova.